Welcome back. This is our maze placemats. This is maze number one. This is, We're starting row four, so I've got my back chart. All of the even number rows are on the back and all of the odd numbered rows are on the front. So we're on row 4A, which is going to be our main color, our first color. And we need to make sure that we have our B color in the right place. So on this one, B is going to start in the back. My pen doesn't want to write, of course. So we'll leave our B color behind. And we'll put our A color back on our hook. Now, we're going to start with four front double crochets. And again, I'm making sure that I skip one of these posts of the other color for every stitch so that I don't have two of these stitches in the same spot. So I won't mess up my pattern. Okay, now I need one, two, three, four, five, six back. I love it's fuzzy. Six back double crochets. And all of these charts and the written instructions are available on my website. You can see the link in the description. So you can download your own chart or you can purchase the printable PDFs. Um, also, you can get links for those from my website. They're available on Etsy and Ravelry. And those also include complete written instructions. If you purchase the PDF, It'll include instructions for all four of the placemats in the set. Okay, so now I've done my six back. I need one front. And then I've got another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven back. I've got one front and two more back. I've got one, two, three, four, five front, one, two, three, four back. So that was five in the front, and I've got four in the back.
Now to finish off this row, I've got a front, two backs, and a front. just almost at a back instead of a front. And then my last stitch is the turn chain, which again is two chains past the top of that double crochet. And this yarn is getting fluffs all over my hands. And then chain four for the turn chain and put in a stitch marker so you don't lose your loop. All right, so that is row 4A. I'm gonna mark off this row because I finished it. If it's hard for you to keep track of where you are on the row, I definitely recommend marking it off as you go. But definitely mark it off when you're done with the row, because when I read this row, if I don't mark it off, sometimes I accidentally read the row below, so it's really helpful to mark it off. Okay, so now I'm on row 4B. I started in the back, which is what this first one is, so I don't need to do another back one. So I'll start with this front. Front, back, front, front. But first, I need to get this back on my crochet hook. If you're just joining in, you can see the beginning for this project. Um, there are links in the description to get to the starting video. I'm doing a video about every two rows, so I'm actually going to do the entire project on video. For those of you who would rather be able to follow along visually while you do it. For those of you who just maybe need a little help getting started, then check out the first video and then have fun using the chart or the written directions, because they can definitely get the job done. Okay, so I did, I started in the back, then I had a front, back, front, front, so it's back, front, back, front, front. Now I've got one, two, three, four backs, four backs, and then a front. I'm just going to mark off that far so I know where I am. I've got back, front, and then three backs. I've got a front and then one, two, three, four, five, six backs. Okay. And one, two, three, four front, one, two, three, four, five back.
the end of the row. Got a front and three back. And again, my last one's always in the top of my turn chain, and then chain four. So this is the end of row four, and now I mark this off, and I'll turn back to the front chart for row five, and I'll turn my project over because we're ready to start a new row. And now for row five, I need to start with my B color in the front. So I'm gonna make sure this B color is in front. Get my yarn out of the way. So I've got B color in front. And I'm putting my main color back on my hook. This blue is so I might need like a lint roller or something. Okay. Now, so we're on row 5A here. So I'm just going to look. I've got front, front, back to start. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six fronts. Six in the front. Now I've got back, front, back, front, front. So I'm going to go in the back. In the front. In the back. And then in the front, next two. Up, I've got back, three fronts, two backs. Moving on, two fronts, then four backs. Front, front, back. Two. 
Coming on the home stretch here. Three front, two back, one front, two back. Of course, the very last stitch goes in the top of the turn chain. And then chain four and place a stitch marker. Okay, so that's the end of row 5A. So 5B, remember we're not going to turn our project over yet because we still have to work our B color row. I'll put this back on my hook. And now on our chart, this first F is already done because we left our work in the front. So that's our turn chain is that first F. So now we're going to start with back, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fronts. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's good. Okay. Now we need one, two backs. So that's blurry focus camera. Okay. Two backs, a front, a back, a front, a back, a front, a back. Oh, alternate. So start with the two backs. And back. The tricky thing about these maze placements is that you can't really get into a groove with a repeating pattern because it changes so much. So I've got front, back, two fronts, two backs. So you really need to pay attention to the chart or the written directions. And I like using the chart just because then I have a visual check to make sure that what I did was right if it matches what the chart looks like.
Now I've got two fronts, two backs, one, two, three, four, five fronts. Finish off the row. I've got back front, two backs, one front. Mark off this row. And now you can do kind of a check, see if we're matching up here. Yeah, I've got this little thing that jogs around there. That looks good. This dark little two kind of shape. So it looks like I'm matching up pretty good here. We've got our maze, so our maze starts here. We go up, around. So far we don't have any twists or turns, but I have a feeling one is coming soon. No, actually we have two choices right there. Anyway, okay, so this is the end of row five, or row five A and five B. At this point we're about a quarter of the way, a little less than a quarter of the way done with this placemat. And it's taken me, um, a little over an hour to do this much. Uh, it's a little slower when I'm videoing because I can't focus as much. So um, I will continue to videotape this, but again, if you want the charts or the written directions, you can access them from my blog with the link in the description of the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want all the latest updates. Happy crocheting!